Hello and welcome. Today we're working on how to forecast a portfolio if we know the average return and the standard deviation. We're going to use a technique called the Monte Carlo simulation. So we not only do one calculation, we're going to do this a thousand times and see with randomness what could happen over time with our portfolio. So hey, let's get started. My name is Jeff from Finally Learn and I help you finally learn financial skills. Let me get rid of all the data here and we'll start from scratch. Okay, let's start with an initial assumption that our beginning investment is $1,000 and somebody's going to put in $100 a month or $1,200 for the year. And let's assume our portfolio has an average return of 12% and the standard deviation of 18%. Now, one of the problems is that doesn't mean a lot to, to most people. What about that standard deviation? We just might use the 12% and if it grows at 12%, a steady rate, we can certainly calculate that. But what we're going to do is we think that the returns are going to be normally distributed with a mean of 12 and an 18% standard deviation. So let's see what would happen over time. So we'll do this for 30 years. So I'm going to do put one here. And then under my home ribbon, I'm going to do the fill, uh, the series. I'm going to put a series here for columns start at one and I'm going to add one the step value will be one and we'll stop at 30 so it will give us one through 30 all the way down you see how that works now so what we need to do we need to estimate a return instead of just putting 12 percent every year and that's a steady 12 percent return with no standard deviation that's how we have to do it if we're just calculating using a formula but here we can calculate uh, the using a random number and figure out what would be a number within that distribution. So we're going to use a function called norm inverse. So I'm going to do hit my FX up here by the formula bar. And so it is norm.inv and it returns the inverse of the normal cumulative distribution for the specified mean and standard deviation. So this is what we need. So we're going to do, we need to know the probability and the probability, I'm going to just pull a random number. So rand and just start parentheses and close parentheses. And that will be a volatile function and it'll always pull from zero to one. It'll pull some decimal number and that will function as our random percent, a random number rather. So the mean is going to be 12%. I'm going to make that an absolute with F4. And standard deviation is going to be 18%. I'll make that also an absolute address with dollar signs using F4. So I'm going to hit done. And so the very first calculation that we calculated, this could happen, would be negative 14.3%. So we think the mean is 12, but the standard deviation, so one standard deviation plus or minus, or two standard deviations plus or minus, and we have a, an assumption of norm, normal returns. So let's copy this all the way down and you see that number change from negative 14 now to negative 8 and anytime we need to recalculate, um, anytime we do any calculation it'll recalculate everything. So here's our returns and so over time we know we have some positive and some negative because we have um, kind of random returns over time. We know that in the stock market you know about a third of the time um, in the S&P 500 might have a losing year. So let's calculate, well, what's our estimated future value for one year? And let's do it for then all 30 years, and we'll get this sample estimated future value. For, that's our first sample. So our estimated future value is going to be, we're going to start with the 1,000 beginning investment times 1 plus, and we'll point to the return here. Now, as soon as I hit enter, it's going to calculate the return again, so it won't be the negative 8. And so here, this is negative 1. This is perfect. So if we lost 1%, we're going to lose about $11. 1.1, we lose $11. And then at the end, we're going to add the 1,200. And so at the end of the first year, we have 1,000 plus 1,200, but we lost a little bit the first time. And now we're showing we have 4% return. So this 1,000, we increased it by $43. 
and we added the 1200 to it. So you can see how that works. So if we do F9 several times, you see every time it's going to change the estimated return, which changes the future value. Now we want to copy this down. And the way we do this is we're going to now have a uh, year two where we're going to take the preceding number times one, uh, start with the parentheses, one plus, and then that whatever that percent is, in this case it's 17, but we know it'll change. And then we're going to add the 1200 every year. I want to make that absolute. So there we go. So if we started out we made 11%, almost a 12% return, then we lost 13%, we would have $3,200. Now I'm gonna copy that all the way down. And so you can see all the way down, based on our first sample estimate, that we're gonna have 80,985. Well, that's gonna keep changing every time we do something different. So at the very top here, we're gonna say our sample estimated future value is this number down at the bottom, that 80,000, and as soon as we hit it, uh, hit enter, it's gonna change what that number is, and then it calculated at 396,000. So that's how that works. So we can calculate this. So one estimate is that we calculate our future portfolio to be 396,000. Well, the next one we do is 724, the next one's 223, the next one's 116. So this is uh, using random numbers all the way through. Well, <clears throat> the Monte Carlo technique says, look, let's do this a thousand times and then let's start looking at what is the mean of the all a thousand. Um, you can do it more than 1,000. You can do it 10,000 or 50,000 or 100,000 times. I'm going to do a thousand just because it, it gives you a, a big number but without um, using up tons of processing power on the Excel spreadsheet. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to build, this is our estimated future value. And I'm going to just point to the 205. Now, as soon as I hit enter, it's going to change. Now it's uh, 368. And I want to do a thousand simulations based on our first estimate. Now, this is a number that's built on all these formulas down here. So built on this 368,000. So we need to show this, we're going to use a what if function called a data table. And so we know we need this not to be a number we've typed in, but based on a formula. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to put one and we're going to do a series of a thousand. So let's go back to the fill. We'll do a series in a column and we'll stop at 1000. Now we could put 10,000 here if you wanted to. So we have 1,000 simulations. So what we're going to do is I'm going to highlight, start with that very beginning, and then go all the way down, highlight all 1,000. I'm going to go to the data ribbon and the what if analysis. I'm going to do a data table. And this is, we need something for, not for the row, but just for the column. So if you you want to put pick a cell that is empty, because we want to kind of trick Excel into doing a simulation on all of these. Um, we don't need an input. We just want you to do a thousand different simulations. So we'll hit OK. And it takes just a few seconds to do this. And so we see that it sometimes it takes a minute to refresh. So what we have is we have a thousand simulations of all different sizes. Some numbers are 100,000. Some numbers are 400,000. Some numbers are even a million. So one of the things we can do is, since we have a thousand simulations, let's start thinking about, well, what is the mean of this or the median and what's the standard deviation? So we can kind of start figuring out what's going on. And we don't have to make one estimate. We can make a thousand and then start making some, some um, estimates based on that a thousand simulations. All right, so here's what we have. So our mean, um, let's do this. Let me highlight this entire column. And I'm going to have a named range. I'm going to name this um, Sims 1000. So how about that? We'll call it Sims 1000. So I want to do a mean, which is an average. And I'm going to call it Sims 1000. You see I have it where it's going to recognize this. So I hit Tab and recognize Sims 1000. I can close the parentheses. And so the mean of all this even though we estimated in this case 
the estimate is 103. Well, the mean of all that, all these 1,000, is 331,000. We can do the same thing for the median. I'm just going to copy this down and replace the median, uh, the average here with the median. And I'm going to replace the standard deviation, the average, and use the standard deviation. And the one I'm going to use is standard deviation of the sample, so stdev.s for the sample. And so now we calculate, well, the mean is 317,000 and the standard deviation is 252,000. It will change, but it doesn't change dramatically as any of the estimates because this is a measure of, of the mean or measure of central tendency. So let's do this. Let's do F9. You'll see that things change, but it's not so dramatic. It's 315,000, 320,000, so on. Well, we also can do percentiles. So we might think of things as the fifth percentile, and the fifth percentile is to be in the bottom 5%, how much would you have to have? And then you can do the 25% and so on. So we're going to use a percentile function. So let me do a search here on FX. Let's do percentile. Percentile, I want to do the inclusive. So it turns the K percentile of values in a range, which is where K is the range from 0 to 1 inclusive. So it includes 0 and 1. So let's do the array. The array, I call it Sims 1000, I believe. Yes. And then I'll point to the 5%, which is 0 0.05. So we'll hit Done here. And I'm going to copy this then all the way down. And so what I have is <clears throat> there is a 95% chance that your portfolio would be greater than 86,333. And there's a 5% chance that your portfolio would be greater than 845,000. But right here in the middle, the 50th percent, that's our median. By definition, the 50th percent is our median. So our mean is 345,000. Our median in this case is 272. And we can do recalculating and we can see how that works. You know, the, the mean or the median doesn't change too much. Sometimes the mean goes up or down. If you have really large numbers or really small numbers, that happens. So let's calculate one more thing. We're finished, and then we'll kind of um, look at uh, changing our initial information. So let's look at the compounded annual growth rate. So this is our rate of return that we want to calculate. So if we invested, so let's do the rate function. So I want to do the rate function. So this gives us our interest rate per period. So this is also called the CAGR, CAGR, the Compounded Annual Growth Rate. So we're going to use the number of periods. I'm going to make that an absolute number. Uh, the payment. I'm going to use the payment number here as the uh, initial, in, uh, the annual investment rather. The present value. I'm going to make it a absolute so here in this case it's 1000 the future value now one of the things that one of the little details that in time value of money with excel or with a financial calculator we need to make something uh, negative the present value and future value are just going to be different signs so i'm going to make the future value just a negative number and i'm going to point to that but i'm going to copy it down so the future value is going to be different and here, uh, the payments happen at the end of the period, and I'm going to guess uh, just 10% here. Now, so what we have is, if the mean, if you invested $1,000 and then $1,200 a year over 30 years, and you end up with $318,000, then you have a return of 11.98%. Now, there's nothing magic about the 12%. You know you're going to get a randomized, uh, a random number could be 12%, could be higher than 12%, could be less than 12%. That's why we're doing the Monte Carlo simulation. But if you had a $318,000 future value, then you know you received uh, right at 12%, 11.98%. If you received $248,000, then you get, uh, you've received about a 10.74%. Well, let's calculate it all the way down. So if you only got 
83,000, then you've received about a 4.94% CAGR, compounded annual growth rate. At 25%, there's a 75% chance you'll be um, higher than 160,877, so that's about an 8.5% return. This, once again, is the median. Above the median is the 75th percent uh, 75th percentile, and that's 400,000. You got a 13% return, and at the 95% return, uh, 95 percentile, you get 16.26%. Now, all this will change if we recalculate. So I'm going to hit F9 a couple of times. It recalculates, and you see how this works. We're going to have different values over time. Every time we recalculate, every all 1,000 recalculates. Now, so let's think about this. Let's say you had you started with $10,000 and you can put in, let's say, $6,000 every year. Well, your numbers get to be um, bigger, but it's the, still the same math built in using the time value of money calculations. So what we have is if you said, hey, I've got $10,000. I'm going to work for the next 30 years. I think I can put in $500 per month um, for 30 years, $6,000 a year for 30 years. Then the median, you have a, looks like a 50% chance you'll have $1.3 million. So this is how you do it. You can change any of these. If you had zero standard deviation, then it blows everything up because we don't have um, randomized numbers anymore. So if your portfolio, uh, you think it's going to be a very, very low standard deviation, which is not realistic for a stock portfolio, then you'll see the numbers are very, very close. So this helps you illustrate the idea of risk over time and the idea of standard deviation. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.